But we just want to say uh, how thankful we are for everyone who is here today. Uh, and uh, our children and young people who are next door, we're going to open up in prayer and, and pray that God would be with them. Uh, we decided to, and just to let you know, we're changing our, our format on Sunday mornings up just a little bit. Um, going to uh, week to week uh, on the end time ministry, we were doing that every Sunday. Uh, and it's a really a, a great um, Bible study. It's a great information. Uh, but I felt like we were um, just getting a little, we needed to have a balance in our teaching. And so we're going to, uh, until we finish up the DVD series, uh, we'll, we'll go from, we'll, one week we will have a teaching in here, and the next week we will, we will preview uh, one of the, the DVDs on the lessons there and until we complete this series. So you will hear um, uh, teaching. And today we're going to we're going to teach from the, the word, and uh, I just want to say thank you to those who have uh, uh, been so so much of a blessing to our family this week. You know, my wife has been sick, and there have been those who have uh, uh, brought uh, food and medicine and uh, um, just other things. With this being uh, Pastor Appreciation Month, the other things I I got uh, years ago. Someone asked me a while back. They said, "What's your favorite?" A cake, and I said, "Well, years ago, someone baked a carrot cake uh, for my wife and I. I mean, it's been years. We first got married, uh, and this person baked a carrot cake for us. And I said, it was the best carrot cake, best cake I'd ever had. And I've wanted something like that since then. And they said, well, we will work on that. And we, lo and behold, we got a, a carrot cake. I was working yesterday." Uh, and we got a carrot cake brought to us, and my children uh, carried it home, and of course they were like, well, we can't touch this until after Dad gets a piece of this cake because it's uh, uh, for pastor appreciation. But, you know, my wife, she's good about, uh, you know, we're one, uh, and she works that out to her uh, her benefit most of the time. Uh, and so, but they they gave her what for because she went ahead and dented uh, that cake uh, before I got home. But it was, it stood up to and it surpassed uh, the cake that I had got uh, years uh, ago. And, and so I, I do appreciate that very much and the things that have uh, taken place over the last few days. And we do appreciate you all and, and all that you do, not just here this month, but just your faithfulness. And, and uh, Brother Harper said something over there. And if you read anything that you read, uh, it, you will see that the best way to show your appreciation is that day in and day out, uh, being faithful to the kingdom and being faithful to the church and being uh, living as a Christian. And that's the best way to show your appreciation. I do, I am grateful. Uh, you know, there's somebody that keeps me stocked up in peanut butter crackers. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I am so grateful to those uh, uh, crackers uh, uh, throughout the week. You know, everybody loves a cracker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. That was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyhow... Uh, let's <laughs> let's uh, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And we're going to pray for our service today. Uh, and uh, we're going to just ask the Lord to be with us throughout this day. Dear Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your grace, Lord. We thank you for your long-suffering, Lord, uh, with us. We do realize without you, we cannot make it, Lord. I pray, God, that you lead and guide us today, Lord. I ask Jesus uh, that your perfect will be done. We pray for our children and our young people next door. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be here and to lift up your name today, God. I pray, Lord, that you bless and move throughout this service, Lord, and help us uh, draw closer to you today. We realize, God, that we are on a journey, Lord, and, and we we realize, God, that the, this race, this journey that we're on, it doesn't go to the one uh, that runs the fastest, but it goes uh, uh, to the one who endures to the end, Lord. And I pray, God, that there would be something inside of each and every one of us uh, that would help us to keep putting one foot in front of, uh, of the other, Lord. We give you the glory and the honor, and we lift up your most holy name 
In Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. 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 If you would be so kind and you have your Bible, if you would turn to Romans chapter uh, 15 and verse uh, 30. I'm going to read uh, Romans 15 and 30 through 33. We're going to talk about the team, and, and I'm going to read a lot of scriptures so you don't have to stand for this. I do appreciate that. I'm going to read several scriptures, uh, uh, and and then uh, we, uh, then I'm going to go to Colossians 4 and 3, and then Colossians 1, 16 through 18, and then Ephesians chapter 4. And we're, we're talking about uh, uh, the, the team. Everybody say the team. The team. And we are a team. Uh, and so uh, I want to let you all know what, what I need from you as the leader of this team. I need support. Everyone say support. Support. And you're a part of this uh, uh, team that is supporting uh, your pastor here. And I may be here until the Lord comes or you don't know if something could happen. And I, uh, you know, God forbid, I, I, I die tomorrow and, and someone else has to step in uh, and take over uh, the role of pastor. It doesn't matter who the pastor is we need to follow them as long as they're following God Amen. 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 Uh, and we need to support them as long as they are living up to the, the word of the Lord and preaching and teaching what the Bible says. Uh, and so Romans chapter 15 and verse 30 says, Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit, that ye strive together with me. Everybody say together. Together, together with me. This is for... Jesus' sake that we work together. This is for the love of the Spirit that we strive together uh, as one. Everybody say as one. as one. In your prayers to God for me is what the rest of that verse says. And then it says in verse 31 that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea and that my service which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted of the saints. That I may come unto you with joy by the will of God and may with you be refreshed. And everyone say refreshed. Refresh. One of the things that we're doing this month, uh, uh, those who are part of the pulpit ministry team, are, are they are preaching and teaching on Wednesday nights to sort of let me uh, set back and, and be ministered unto and, and give me a little bit of a break. Now, uh, one of the places that I receive some of my... Uh, greatest strength is while I am preaching and teaching. Some of the times uh, uh, that, that I feel the safest is when I am I am here behind this uh, uh, pulpit and I, I feel closer to God uh, when I'm behind this pulpit. But my, my physical body uh, needs a break. I need a little bit of a to step back and let and, and I thank God that we've been blessed with uh, uh, people who can minister. Uh, Brother Stanley ministered for the very first time uh, Wednesday night and did an awesome job. Amen. Amen. He taught us a lesson that brought us. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. That was heartfelt, amen, and it was just something else. And, and so it, it strengthened me and, and lifted me up. And so, uh, you know, that's what I need. And I'm thankful for those who have, uh, they they didn't know that they were going to be called upon so quickly uh, when we organized this uh, this little group that we put together. Uh, but I'm thankful that they have stepped forward and, and you will be ministered to. And I thank God that we have preachers and teachers uh, within this church and that I don't have to do it. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And we have these different ministries in the church, and we thank God for it. And then verse 33 says, Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. And then I'll go to Colossians chapter 4 and verse 3. It says, With all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds. As a, a, a body of believers and as this team uh, that has been brought together, uh, this, this church family, we need to pray that God would open the door that we can speak the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere we go and let the church say amen. 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 And then uh, in uh, Colossians 1, and 16 it says for by him and this is talking about Jesus were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him hey folks who is this church for Jesus 
Yes, it's for Jesus. Uh, amen. And He is before all things, and by Him all things consist. And He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He might have the preeminence. Uh, I'm not the head of this church. I may be the pastor and the good shepherd uh, of this church, but I want you to know the head of this church is Jesus Christ. Amen. And we follow Him. And if I ever, as I mentioned, uh, you know, I'm the founding pastor of this church. I didn't get voted in. Uh, you, there wasn't a council that said, hey, we've got a, a select group of preachers uh, that we're going to pick from. Uh, I came here, folks, uh, with a promise of nothing. Uh, I came here with my wife uh, uh, and the calling of God on our family. And we have worked out a church in this place. I wasn't elected. But now if I ever get to the point where I'm straying from the Word of God, we have elders who are in this church that will call a council together and boot me out, if you will. God forbid, God forbid that ever happens. But I want you to understand, hopefully it never does. But if I ever lose my mind, if I ever lose my relationship with Jesus Christ, please do that. We do need to make some changes. And I'm getting, I'm jumping from here to there. We have a board of trustees that, that three people set upon. Unfortunately, only one of those people are still here with the church. And we need to revise our board of trustees. We've got to make some changes. Uh, uh, in that, uh, and we need to do that real, uh, real quickly. I've been talking, I've been waiting, I've been patient because I was hoping that the Lord would deal with those who were a part of this uh, uh, to get back in church. But I see that it's, uh, you know, hope, I know it can and it will happen, but we've got to move forward. And everyone say, Amen. 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 Uh, we, we have a, a select group of elders who are part of this church that I thank God for. I thank God for uh, Brother Kennedy and Brother uh, Cannon who are uh, elders in this church uh, that we can look to uh, to lead and guide us. And I thank God for placing them and keeping them here. And let the church say amen. amen. But it doesn't matter who's in one of these positions or who is happens to be on this board. This uh, a church does not belong to a board. It belongs to Jesus. Amen. And we need to remember that regardless of where we are at in this church or what role we might be fulfilling. And if, even if we are in leadership, ultimately Jesus Christ is the leader of this church. Amen. And if our elders, if our board is not following uh, uh, Jesus, then they need to be removed. Everyone say amen. amen. If your pastor is not following Jesus, then he needs to be removed. Ephesians 4 and 11 says that He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. He gave us all of this in the next verse. Can anyone tell me why He gave us these, uh, this five-fold ministry? The next verse tells us this. For the perfecting of the saints. You see, we have these ministries in the church. Uh, a lot of times we want to say, oh, I'm not perfect. Just forgive them. Well, if you stay in the church, you should be striving for perfection. perfection. And you should, the, 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 the older you get in the Lord, uh, you, should be coming, you should begin to look more like Jesus. Amen. Someone say amen. amen. Uh, and so he gave us apostles and prophets and evangelists uh, and pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Uh, all of this uh, is to build up the church and make it strong. Right. And so when we have uh, these uh, ministries operating in the church, uh, we need to thank God for it. If we have someone who stands up here in the role of minister and teacher, uh, and it's somebody who's been a part of this church uh, for a few years, or if they're new to this church, we should never think, well... They don't need to be up there. Hey, thank God that they are up there. And God is, a, and they are allowing themselves to be used of God. Amen. I want you to know that nobody is really worthy to stand in this place. Right. That's right. None of us. Right. But I thank God that He allows us, and I thank God for those who allow themselves to be used of God. Amen. Amen. And someone say amen. amen. 
for the perfecting till in verse 13 till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We have these ministries in the church. We're working for the perfecting of the saints in the church until we all come into the unity of the faith. Do you know we don't always agree on everything? Right. And we don't have to always agree on everything to have unity among us. Amen. <laughs> unity does not mean that we all uh, we all agree that uh, that everything is uh, uh, A B C D. Unity is that we may have some differences among us, but we still strive together for the good of the kingdom of God. Amen. And everyone say amen. amen. And so that's what we're here to do. We may not all agree. You know, I, I might think, uh, I might say, hey, you know, to, I, I, it's my personal belief. And I have a, uh, a, a dear uh, elder that I've looked up to, one of my mentors. Uh, uh, he stopped reading the comic strips uh, years ago because he felt it was a... Um, it was just a waste of his time. Now, he never preached that reading comic strips uh, uh, were, you know, a sin. My dear brother Kennedy gave up coffee a long, long time ago. Now, he drinks a lot of uh, tea in place of it, but he gave up coffee. But now, folks, I drink coffee like uh, it's going out of style. Amen. You know, now there are some people who say, you know, oh, well, that coffee is... Uh, there are honestly people who believe that drinking coffee is a sin. Well, I want you to know, I hope it's not a sin. I, I pray <laughs> strong and hard about it. And, and God has not led me to that place. <laughs> you know, and I don't, I don't see it in there either. And so, you know, Brother Kenny has given that up. That, that you know, it's not something that God has called me uh, to give up yet. And so, we, even though he feels passionately about that for himself, we still strive together. Right. You know, he could be saying, going to everybody, you know, oh, the pastor's drinking coffee and, and he's leading us all to hell by, by drinking coffee. But he doesn't do that. Everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so we strive together in unity. We may have these little differences, but we know what it takes to get people to heaven. That's showing them the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Everyone say amen. Amen. I mean, so our, our, our greatest focus and our main purpose is that the doors would be open so that we can speak the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we all differ on some, some things. And, and some of them may be dressed. And some of them may be some of the things that we do outside the church. Uh, uh, you know, and I taught several Wednesday nights about uh, things over the past, uh, uh, the significance of separation. Uh, some of the things that, that I hold near and dear to my heart uh, uh, that I have sacrificed for the Lord. And I'm going to hold on to those things. But I'm not going to tell you, hey, you have to do everything like, the, like I do to make it to heaven. Because you don't. Right. You have to obey the gospel and you have to live your life for the Lord if you want to make it to heaven. Amen. Amen. Bottom line. So our greatest focus is uh, that others find the gospel and others are given the gospel. There's nothing more important than spreading the love and the gospel of Jesus Christ and let everybody say amen. amen. The Great Commission is not something that the pastor does on his own on his own or it's not something that the leaders in a select few work on accomplishing. The Great Commission is something that every believer should be doing. Amen. amen. Go ye therefore into all nations. Uh, uh, and that's what we need to be doing. When you're out on your job, when you're at school, when you're uh, uh, just in the neighborhood, you need to be sharing Jesus uh, with everybody. Amen. I thank God for the leaders of this church, the elders, the teachers, the, the preachers, the counselors, both men and women that God has called and chosen to complete the work of the kingdom. We need them all. Amen. And everyone say amen. Amen. But we also need a, a, a leader. We need a pastor to lead this group. Right? Yeah, people come to me before and say, you know what? We really, I, I believe, and there are people who believe this, you shouldn't have a pastor in the church. You should have a, a council who sort of leads the church. You know, uh, and maybe three or four people who are in charge. Well, you know, any body physical body that has more than one head is a freak. That's right. That's right. 
Yes, we do function together. We do work together. And sometimes the head might need a, a, a little work, uh, you know, and, and so we'll work on it. And, 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 but we don't need a, a three or four headed beast leading this body of believers. Right. We need to work Amen. together in unity. Amen. Ultimately, the head of the church is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Leadership in the kingdom of God is uh, nothing more. And, and, you know, being a leader in the kingdom of God is not something special. It shouldn't be something to say, oh, look at me. Look what I do in the kingdom. Being a leader is really being a servant. Jesus said, if you want to be great in the kingdom of God, then you need to be the least. Right. If you really want to be a big shot in the kingdom, you need to be the one who is serving. Amen. That's what Jesus showed us. Amen. That's His words, uh, not mine. Uh, and I believe in God called leadership. Uh, leaders are not just made a lot of time. Uh, many leaders are born. God has, uh, uh, has given people a, a gift to lead. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for that, that gift. Now, it does need molding and it does need growth and it does not it needs help uh, but God chooses and God calls the leaders uh, that he wants in the kingdom and we thank God for it but really they're not leaders they are servants right amen. we shouldn't really call it leadership we call it servantship amen we're all serving in the kingdom of God the definition uh, of lead is to guide on a way especially by going in advance amen. And so someone who is leading in the kingdom of God is here to guide others. Not put a gun to someone's head and say, go this way. Right. Or put a gun to their... You know, as a leader, I'm not behind you pushing you. And I should never have to be behind you pushing you. Amen. I should be, hey, let's go this way. Right. Follow me, as Paul said. Follow me as I follow Christ. Christ. So that's what uh, someone who is leading, we're guiding in advance. Uh, and this definition of leading, you don't find boss, uh, you don't find manager, you don't find task mas master, you don't find the big one in charge, uh, you don't find the word position holder or title holder. The first part of this definition, I believe, is the kingdom definition. To guide on a way, especially by going in advance. We are leading people to Jesus Christ. It is my goal to lead this church all the way to heaven. Amen. 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 My pastor many years ago, uh, my pastor before I came here, preached a message one time, and he was talking about how at the uh, at like the big conventions, political conventions, they have uh, you know okay they'll introduce the delegates from Montana, the delegates from uh, 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 New Hampshire, and, and you know they they all uh, shout and cheer. Well, I'm believing uh, as he used to preach. Once we all get to heaven, uh, you know uh, uh, I don't know if it'll be Jesus Christ or it'll be uh, one of the the, the elders will stand up there and say, all right, here are the delegates from Rayford, North Carolina. Yeah. And all of a sudden, yeah! We are here and we made it. And I want you to know, uh, we can never, uh, one man can never accomplish uh, the work of God. Amen. We are working and we're doing this together. Right. And we're laborers, as the scripture says, we are laborers together. Amen. Amen. With Christ Jesus. It takes a team effort. And we need to empower everybody who's a part of this church uh, or this team, if you will, to know how to follow the man of God. Amen. And to do what God has called us to do. You know, I'm not building this church all by myself. Right. It takes everybody to build this church. You know, every person who's a part of this family of God holds a responsibility to help build and grow God's kingdom. You have a responsibility to help build this church. Amen. Your responsibility is to not just show up here on Sunday morning and say amen every time I say something good or something you agree with. Your responsibility is to, when you lead, yes, when you're here, you need to praise and worship God. You need to back up the preacher, the evangelist, whoever it is. You need to pay your tithes and your offerings. Uh, uh, but it's your responsibility to be out there being a witness and an example, helping draw others uh, into this great uh, uh, kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Thank God. So when we're out there working or, or, or whenever we're out there, remember, we have a responsibility to help grow the kingdom of God. 
You know, the Scripture says uh, you know, that once we get to heaven, there'll be a number there that no man can number. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of times when we look at the spectrum of things, we say, well, there's not a whole lot of people uh, you know, who, are, uh, who are in the church, or there are not a whole lot of people who are living this Christian life. Uh, well, there's going to be a revival, and there's going to be an outpouring in the last days uh, to where the church grows so great and so big. Uh, folks, it's going to blow our minds. And I'm not just talking about this local assembly, but it is going to happen in this local assembly. And let everybody say amen. 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 But then once we get to heaven, there's going to be so many people there uh, that, hey, wow, they can't even take a, a census. We can't even number it. There are so many people there. Amen. I praise amen. God for it. Can you say amen? Amen. We have a responsibility, and I thank God, you know, this church is growing. It seems over the past couple of months uh, that we've hit a place to where we're, 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 we're numerically, we're not really growing, but even at times when we're not growing numerically, we are growing uh, in maturity. Amen. And we th- and we'll have those time periods. Uh, we may not always uh, see a growth in the numbers uh, here, but during that time, we are growing and maturing spiritually, and, and we need to remember that. Now, we do need to say, all right, we, we want to grow a little bit more, and, and we need that. We need to mature so that we can grow more in numbers. Amen. And right now, we're at a time where we are maturing, hopefully. And if I'm not, or you're not uh, growing mature, uh, uh, maturing as we should during this season, then we need to get to pray. We need to be, hey God, this is a time of mature, maturing growth. Well, let that happen to us. Amen. So that that it happens quickly so that we can prepare for the next influx uh, of new believers. Amen. And one of the reasons that we may not be growing numerically at this point is because we need to mature more so that we can take care of the new babies who come in the church. Right. All right. So we're working and, and we're all working at this together. We are growing and I thank God that the church is growing. And as it grows, we find that we need more help in certain areas. And because of this, uh, there are servant positions that that become available in the church. Uh, And when those positions are available, let God speak to you and call on you and draw you to where you can lead. And sometimes you may feel like you're the only person who uh, who is in there and doing what you need to be doing. Well, you keep on doing it. Amen. Somebody say amen. I know a lot of times when we go on outreach and even sometimes uh, uh, we'll have a, a, a prayer meeting and there may be just one or two people who show up. Don't get discouraged about that. Hey, I'm doing what God called me to do uh, and I know eventually uh, things will happen and it'll catch on. Uh, I, I'm not worried. You know, a lot of times uh, when I first started in this, I would get a little bit discouraged and even now sometimes the, uh, the devil will try to whisper in my ear, oh, well, you know all those people who didn't show up today in service? You know, because uh, uh, as a good pastor, I keep track of it, and I like to send people cards, and I like to send them a, a, a note, let them know, or give them a phone call. Hey, I love you, and I miss you, and I know, you know people aren't just missing to give me a hard time, but a lot of times the devil will be tapping me on the shoulder. Oh, you know how many people wasn't at church today? Mm-hmm. No, I, I, I don't focus on that. I focus on how many were at church yes. today. Amen. Thank God for it. I, I've heard pastors get up and really you know, preach hard and, and beat the saints up who were there. You know, uh, and he should have been, uh, he needed to call those on the phone and let them know, uh, you know, don't beat the people up who are here. We're a team and we're working hard to move forward. Amen. And if there isn't but two people here, thank God. That's all we need to have church is two people. Amen. Hallelujah. But if you ever do hold a position in the church, I want you to remember that you are not in charge of anything. Even I, as pastor of this church, I'm not in charge of anything. Really, I'm not. God is in charge. Amen. If we ever get to the point where we're like, hey, you all need to do what I say, you're out of here. Guess what? They'll probably be out of here. 
Because, you know, this is all a volunteer. This is an all-volunteer army. Amen. And we don't want to be whipping up on our volunteers. Hey, I thank God for every person that shows up and cleans the church. I thank God for everyone who volunteers to teach Sunday school or to be up here ministering through music or whatever it is. I thank God for every one of them. Amen. And if you are ever, you know, we have someone who's in who, who leads uh, our Sunday school department. I thank God that they have the right spirit. If you are leading a, a ladies ministry or music ministry or, or any type of ministry here, remember you are leading. You're not in charge of it. Right. You just follow, uh, follow Jesus and where He leads, we will follow. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? If a position or a title that you hold means so much to you that you lose your focus on reaching souls and you lose your spirit of unity and you quit being team and kingdom minded, you need to get back on track real quick. Amen. Amen. This is all about Jesus. Right. It's all about reaching souls. Bottom line. You know, we don't have time for games, and we don't have time for jealousy, and we don't have time for anything that hinders uh, the work of God. We stay close to Jesus. If, 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 you know, if you, we don't have time for gossip. Just like Sister uh, Alex said last Sunday, she said, you know, the, Jesus said to go ye therefore and spread the gospel, not spread gossip. Amen. You know, I, I like that right there. Amen. Uh, uh, and so if somebody's spreading gossip, turn them off real quick. Amen. And you, I mean, you, well, I don't want to offend them. Hey, don't worry about offending them. Just say, hey, I don't want to hear that. Amen. Amen. And if you hear something that you're not sure about, you can always call and say, hey, you know, and I've had people do that before. Pastor, I heard such and such. Uh, is this right? And if it's right or if it's wrong, I'll set you. And if you don't need to know, I'll just flat out tell you, well, that's something that you don't need to know. Amen. Well, I heard so-and-so was living in sin. Hey, you don't need to worry about that right there. Right. You pray for that person. Amen. You know, I heard, you know, you're letting so-and-so do this and that. Uh, and I heard that they were, hey, folks, don't ever mistake my patience with approval. You know, the Lord is patient with us and long-suffering. You know, He doesn't, just because I've made a mistake, He doesn't send me straight to hell. He's long-suffering. Guess what? We need to be the same way as Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. So uh, we need to make sure. And, and, and you know, back in the beginning when we first started, uh, my wife and I did everything in the church. And a lot of times we still feel like we need to do everything in the church. Right. Uh, but but we don't. And sometimes I need you to tap me on the shoulder and say, uh, Pastor, I'll take care of that. Amen. No. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, there are opportunities. You know, I don't have to do everything. Hallelujah. Sometimes I need you to tap me on the shoulder and say, Pastor, I'll take care of that. Amen. Yeah, that sounded better. Yeah. Hallelujah. Being a, a servant leader is not... And one thing I want you to realize in our, in our church, and I'm thankful for this, uh, being a servant leader uh, is not just reserved for adults. God has blessed us with some great young people Amen. who are under the age of 18 and even right there at that age. Uh, and, and they are they have that spirit to in them to lead. And I thank God for it. I thank God for those young people who, uh, who got up here last Sunday uh, and, and ministered the Word. Did an awesome job. I'm thankful, you know, well, oh, well, they're just kids. No, hey, look back uh, in the Old Testament. Uh, God used 8 and 12 year old children to lead nations. Amen. Yes, He did. And He can use these. And the Scripture tells us, become as a little child. Uh, you know, that's if we're going to be what God wants us to be. And we can learn something from these young people who have such a passion. Yes, they mess up. Yes, they make mistakes. They're just kids. But at the same time, they have a passion after the ministry. They have a passion after the Word of God. And we need to commend them for that. We need to pray for them. And when they minister, we need to listen and let it touch our hearts and our minds. Amen. 
thank God for our music ministry in the church. I thank God for our Sunday school staff, our youth ministry, our song interpretation ministry. That's the, the mind ministry if it is, is what we call it. But uh, it's co more commonly being referred to as a song interpretation ministry. They do an awesome job when they get up here and minister uh, to us through their interpretation. We have ladies ministry, children's ministry, the benevolence ministry that where we go out and we give food and clothes and other things. We have the cleaning ministry in this church. Amen. You say, well, I can't do this or that. Well, hey, there's something in here that you can do. Right. And, and in some of these, we don't have someone that is, uh, uh, is, is sort of being the, the, the leading drive in this. And we could use some help. We, we've recently formed this pulpit ministry team. And I, I thank God for it. And, and we need to pray. And, and when someone is in a visible position, in the church. I have asked some certain guidelines that when you're up here on the platform or in the classroom teaching or ministering or if we go to another church to, to minister that we, we dress a certain way. Right. That, that we abstain from certain things when you are up here. And, and if anybody, you know, if you have a, a, an issue with that, you know, I, I'm sorry. If I'm going to work at McDonald's, I'm going to have to wear a uniform. Right. When I was a sales rep years ago uh, for a leading communications uh, uh, company, they did not, their, their men, if you're a man, you can't have earrings out here on the floor. You can wear an earring when you're not here, but when you're out here selling and representing this company, you're not going to have your ears. You're not going to be wearing loops and rings and this and that. Well, if you wanted that job, guess what? Right. You did what they said. There are companies where if you have tattoos down your arms, they, they tell you if you're going to be out here, you're going to be wearing long sleeves because you're going to have those tattoos covered up. Yes. Well, if you, want to, if you want that job, guess what you're going to do? You're going to cover up your tattoos. You know, there are certain guidelines that we've asked our, our people who are up here in music or, or teaching and preaching uh, that while they're up here, please abstain from this stuff. You know, and it, because it gives a good, clean, clear picture, uh, and we don't want anything. And I know sometimes we can always say, well, uh, this or that. But, you know, folks, let's just love Jesus. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that everybody has to wear orange socks when they're up here on the platform. I'm not asking that all the ladies wear orange pantyhose when they're up here on the platform. If you're going to be on... No, I'm saying let's look clean. Let's uh, Our ladies look like ladies. Right. We ask that when our ladies are up here ministering that they have a dress on. What? Well, I can go anywhere in this world and I don't have to speak that nation's language. But if I'm looking for a bathroom, I know how to find... I know how to not go in the wrong bathroom. Amen. Why? Because when I go to that door, the women's bathroom, guess what? The women's have... Yeah, they have dresses. I know not to go in there. Right. All right, it's, it's okay. And so we want our women. You say, well, uh, that's old fashioned. Well, I'm sorry if that's old fashioned. I agree with you. You know, that's just that's just the way it is. Now, if you're out of here, if you want to do whatever, hey, go ahead. But I want you to know when you're up here, we want a lady to look like a lady and a man to look like a man. You don't want me up here in a dress, do you? Right. No. no. You want me ministering like a man. Everybody say amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, you know, and so we ask that. And if you will study history, there was a blurring of the lines between male and female during World War II. Up to that point, guess what? Ladies always wore dresses. Men always wore pants. But when our men were all shipped overseas, the ladies had to go into the workforce. Then they had to start wearing the attire of a man. Now, I'm not, hey, I'm not saying if you have pants on, you can't come to church. Folks, you come to church any way you want, except naked. Right. <laughs> 
Everybody say amen. amen. You know, but when you're up here, folks, we want to represent uh, in a good, positive way. And everybody say amen. 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 So, uh, and, and and I've got really, but we have work to do in the church. Amen. We have ministry to perform in the church. Uh, and there are opportunities for prayer ministry and for outreach and these guidelines uh, uh, that we, we ask for you to follow while you are in the role of the minister. They're not taxing. They're not. You know, it just says, hey, I'm representing, and this is the, the guidelines that the pastor feels like the Lord has set for, for us, and so we'll do them. Amen. And it, Now, if you don't want to do them, you don't have to get up here. We still want you to be here and lift up the name of the Lord because not everybody is called to be on the platform. Amen. Not everybody is called to be in a classroom teaching. Amen. Everybody is called to help spread the gospel. Right. Your, your, your role in the church service might just to be... Be out there and lifting up the name of the Lord and worshiping the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And, and, and hey, thank God for it. Amen. You know, sometimes I get worried because we have a dozen or more people on the platform. That's a lot of people. It is. You know? Uh, but we need the people out here working and moving and praising and worshiping. Everybody say amen. amen. You know, if we were all up here and there was nobody out there, be kind of rough on our guests, wouldn't it? They feel kind of, no, we all are in here working together. Everybody say amen. amen. And you know, I had uh, eight or nine pages of the notes, and I'm just now hitting page four. Uh, but I believe, you know, this lesson that I'm teaching our adult Sunday school class today, I want you to, we are a team working together. Our ultimate goal is unity. And unity does not mean that we all agree 100%. We are never going to agree 100% on everything. And I thank God for it. Because if, that's the way, if that was what unity was, then we would all just be a bunch of mind-numbed robots. We are going to have differences. As long as we agree upon the gospel of Jesus Christ and loving the lost like Jesus loved us, then we're going to be all right. So we're working together. Everybody say together. Yeah. And if somebody is not doing everything like you think they should be doing, hey, let it go. A lot of times it might just be the enemy tugging on your ear trying to get your focus off what's most important. What's most important is loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and loving your neighbor as yourself. Those are the two greatest commandments and everything else hangs on that right there. That's not me, that's Jesus. And thank God that we're following Jesus today. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Ask you to greet one another as we wait for our children and young people to come from next door.